Welcome back to Rovex's YouTube series, Automation for the Now. This is part one of a two-part episode focusing on identifying the solutions for our customers. Let's get started. Rovex presents Automation for the Now, a series discussing industry-specific topics that affect manufacturing processes and the automation solutions that are innovating the future today. Today, I have a special guest, uh, Troy Kudzian. Troy is our VP of Sales here at, at Robex. And um, we're going to have some fun with Troy today. We, he's going to showcase and talk about his expertise and, and, and some of the things he's done over the years uh, leading up to helping oversee um, some of the great things we're doing here at Robex. Troy, I want to welcome you to uh, Automation for the Now. Thanks, Cal. Appreciate it. Yep. Great being here. You know, it's good to have you. Troy, talk a little bit about your um, your experience in the, uh, in the automation world <laughs> leading up to the last probably, you know, uh, the, the, up to yeah, day one here and up to this point with, uh, with Robex. Yeah, so I started out in uh, college as a co-op student um, building electrical control panels, electrical pneumatic devices. Uh, from there, when I graduated college, I moved into the PLC department. So I was programming uh, controls, PLCs. Uh, back then it was PLC 5, Slick 500. So some of that real new, older, well, older technology back then. Um, as I moved on in my career, then I started programming robots. Um, so I moved into their kind of their R&D department, um, taking on bigger roles, testing uh, certain components of, of the sales process, cycle time, pick, pick and place. Uh, ability. Uh, so then from there, I, it was a natural move for me to move right into a sales role. Um, and, and where I was previously, um, we sold the project and also project managed. So you really get to learn the process because what you sell, you have to you have to make work. Right. So we just weren't putting putting equipment out there um, because then it would uh, it would hurt myself too. So it, it was a great great experience. I did that for about 15 years on the sales and PM side. So what you know happened a lot of times is you were project managing during the day. And you were in a lot of hats. You were in a lot of hats yeah. the entire process, other than right. just focusing on one area. Right, and quoting during the day, you know, quoting it in the evening. So nonetheless, you, you right. learned that. So that really prepared me doing that for the last five, uh, 15 years, really prepared me for the role I'm in today as sales manager. You know, Troy, one of the things when I talk with uh, <laughs> folks about uh, their solutions and the things they need for their, their uh, specific um, uh, facilities, uh, whether it's, again, robotics or material handling, um, when, when the handoff, when it comes from me to you, I, I always like to introduce you, obviously, uh, and the other and, and Rob Johnson, who's uh, also on your team, as the um, the solutions guys, yeah. um, because at the end of the day, you are the ones that are creating uh, the solutions for our partners as it relates to their uh, their specific needs. And every every job, every uh, every partner is a little bit different in, in the way that they present their um, you know, the, the stuff they're trying to get figured out. Yes, so it, it is the mouse, it, whoever comes up with the, the best mouse trap usually wins. So when you look at it from a sales standpoint, it's it's price, relationship, and solution. So if you have you know two out of the three, you, you've got a good chance of closing that business. If you have all three, which is what you're saying is yeah. the solution, then then more than likely you're going to close that business. Troy, once we've identified the need here at Robex and determined that there's an opportunity to help a customer. Walk me through the sales manager review process that you you go through us personally, and then uh, and or when you include the team as well. Yeah. So step one is really gathering all the information. So you're you're qualifying it at that point. Right. Um, I'm gathering all the information and trying. What we're trying to do as efficiently as possible is gather all the information, analyze that data, and then and then quote it. Right. So um, in 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 that process, there's you know you, you can look at look at projects that are coming in and say, God, have we done this before? Uh, if we have, it immediately goes to a uh, quote. Um, if it's something that doesn't fit our niche, um, you know, it's more than likely going to be a hard no right. because we're trying to stick with, with niches to be efficient. And, and what we've done in the past, we don't want to get off into something um, you know, that we're not familiar with. So robotics encompasses a, a lot of different things. Uh, so our niche is in that pick pack pal segment. Um, there's a there's a third option in there. So you have a yes or a no. Um, and, and a lot of times 
what we'll do is go to like an R and D. So we need more information. Um, and what that entails is I try to usually get engineering involved because I want them, I want to get buy-in from them and I want to see how big that risk is if uh, on the project. If I can't analyze it myself, I want my team members right. involved in that. So we can take it through engineering, have an engineering review on it. If they're comfortable with the risk um, that, hey, it, it's a small risk, then we can move forward in the quoting process. If not, um, then we really have to identify what the issues or concerns are, uh, identify the scope of work, and really take it through the R and D process. Um, what, what involving the, the the customer that we're working with? How can they help with that R and D process? Is there is there uh, items that they can send up? Is there product that they can allow us to take a look at? Because obviously, you know, we're going to have videos and images and and, and sizes and, and speed. But sometimes, you know, I think. What I've seen you guys do is actually have a piece of the uh, the product in hand mm -hmm. to be able to re review how important is that? <laughs> yeah, of, co of course they play a huge role and, and we'll request whatever information. So we can take our, our concept um, and we really break our concept down of what what are our concerns? So if it's in the end of arm tooling and we need their product to test uh, pickability, right. are we are we concerned with maybe when we pick the product, we're throwing it across the plant floor at the accelerations and speeds of the robot that we need to run at? You have to identify what what is the scope of work that we're trying to overcome, that we're trying to okay. understand to give us a, a, a level of confidence, but it's a level of confidence for the customer as well. So sure. if we take it through this R&D process, uh, you know, we can all be assured that we're going to have a successful project in the end versus just right. having a concept and saying, well, we think it's going to work. Um, so the, the customer plays a, a huge role in that. So, uh, you know, there's there could be cost to cost to develop it. There could be a lead time just in R&D. And, and we may get at the end of it. And uh, hopefully our goal is to be able to get to the proposal. Right. And have successful. But it, we, we may get to the point um, at the at the end and say, you know that that concept didn't didn't work, and um, you know start over. Before you go, please hit the subscribe button for our YouTube channel. If you have any questions or just want some more information about Robex, please feel free to email us at automation at robex.us. Thanks for watching.